Welcome back. If you're joining us, you're watching Channel One News Hour. It's time for Perspective, and we focus on issues surrounding the counties, and particularly uh, what we have seen in the past, the controversy surrounding the Division of Revenue Bill. But we will be looking at fundamentally what is the funding to the counties? Is it sufficient? And with the current scenario, are counties accessing services? What are some of the untapped potential within the counties? Well, for more insight on that, I'm now joined by the governor for Tana River County, that is Dr. Major Retired Dado Godana. It's good to have you with us this evening. Welcome to KBC. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, let's begin with you know what is happening. Tomorrow we expect uh, that you will be back in court over the Division of Revenue Bill. Uh, but just looking at the county allocation, is it not sufficient? Um, I think, uh, leave alone the county revenue not being sufficient because of course it is not sufficient. One of the arguments that uh, as a council we have been discussing that um, um, funds should follow functions uh -huh. because it's again about implementation of programs within counties to be able to effect what we actually want to effect. Yes. Um, when we were looking at the law, the constitution, uh, and us who fought for devolution mm -hmm. very strongly, believed that counties would now be the institutions to be able to generate the economy that we require. Yes. So we believed in grassroots economy. And so in my own personal view, it is not possible for us to believe uh, that the counties can now be able to operate under the allocation that they have. Mm -hmm. um, we are still very uh, young in trying to build capacities in counties. Mm -hmm. We still need to have uh, vehicles, institutions, that can manage certain programs. Um, but looking at the funds uh, that we are allocated, um, Somehow we are struggling. You are struggling. But apart from that, two things determine uh, what goes to counties. Uh -huh. Not just about uh, resources accompanying the functions, but again, it is. It comes out of a consultative process between parties, uh -huh. council of governors, national government, treasury. Um, uh, CRA. The Senate, CRA, SRC, all those parties together. And it is out of that forum, the IBEC, that now uh, the determination is arrived at. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where CRA advises um, putting all factors together, yes. and then eventually they put a position, mm -hmm. and then somehow uh, in the same discussion, Council of Governors comes, everyone comes, and then we agree, we say, we want, the, what is ideal is this way. Yes. Uh, and then instead of us arriving at a consensus, then people start pulling different directions. That's what I think uh, us as Council of Governors felt should change. You felt should change. And that's um, why you moved to court. Yes. But even as you move to court, let's look at, you know, the production within the counties themselves. Because yes. there are those who argue that a county county governments are not realizing their potential. They are not they're not, you know, generating their own income. That's not true. Um, one would expect that probably counties would be able to have the capacity to generate incomes in the manner that probably Kenya Revenue Authority had been doing. No, it should be more uh, production. Uh, I know, but, but, but again, uh, counties require to put infrastructures in place. It requires to build the capacities that are required. It requires also, um, um, apart from just the bit of the infrastructure, certain programs within counties to be able to uh, effect serious production mm -hmm. that now will translate into revenue will have to be done. Uh, so you would probably expect that at the onset, uh, Tana would be able to be taxing uh, the sector of agriculture 
in the manner that is required. Yes. But then, if you look at the, the chains, the, the, the sources of incomes, some of them are not properly developed. They have to be developed first for us to be able to achieve the targets that we require. Mm -hmm. but so on one side, yeah. on one hand, counties are struggling to make these sources uh, upstanding. On the other, counties are trying to, 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 to diversify and to bring on board the many other sources of local revenues on board. And I can give you an example of Tana, for example. When we came in, mm -hmm. uh, we found that only the target was, was, was 90 those years. It reduced to 60. Mm -hmm. Target for what? The local revenue yes. collection. Yes. The target for the county was 90. Mm -hmm. So it went down. Somehow it was reduced to 60, then to 30. Mm -hmm. But even after reducing it to 30, they could collect 27. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, we need to go deeper and understand why we are collecting less. And that has been the problem across the board. And then we, we, we now uh, try to uh, strengthen the systems. Mm -hmm. Of course, what we found there were administrative systems. Um, we hadn't gone to automation. We hadn't yet uh, put in the uh, sub-county revenue collection offices. We didn't have much of people revenue uh, collectors out there. People were relying on commission agents. Mm -hmm. um, and so there were challenges mm -hmm. to streamline the administrative part first. Even before now we start the journey towards automation and integration. Mm -hmm. That's a process. Mm -hmm. So when we tried to streamline systems, we moved from the target of 30 and we realized 40 something. Mm -hmm. So um, you have begun to realize. We have. We started. We started to begin to to realize high incomes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you read, I think, uh, in social media. I saw it going around. That this time, we had collected above sixty. Mm -hmm. So the automation is beginning to work. We That's have not yet gone automation. Yes. This basically administrative. Administrative. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Trying to tighten up uh, some of that very processes. Uh, identifying more sources of income, um, making sure in some of the markets we have our collection, uh, uh, those rev uh, uh, um, revenue collection, uh, um, um, these ones they're called the, the commission agents. Yes. Um, and we are now getting to get more of those source collection points. So it's a process. It cannot just take a day, day one, and all of a sudden you have everything right. Mm -hmm. but there are those as counties, as yeah. especially those that are doing second term now, they, they have upscaled a bit of their revenue collection uh, processes, and so they're doing better. Some have already gone to automation. Mm -hmm. We are not all at the same level. Mm -hmm. I think there are people who believe, and they still want, that um, a Kenya Revenue Authority should be given room to go and uh, help counties to do it. I don't object. <laughs> but That's but one of the ways. But even as you talk about, you know, yes. counties trying to collect their revenue, the question that also keeps coming back is the issue about accountability of the revenue within the county, uh, the issues about graft, uh, the issues of mismanaging resources. How are you, you know, dealing with this? Because it continues to be a challenge in as much as counties talk about being given more resources. There are those who feel that they're not spending the resources where they're supposed to go towards. Majority of it is going to recurrent expenditure and wastage. I don't think so. Uh, I think you can go this case by case. Uh, this, the situation in probably Mombasa County may not be the same as Turkana. Uh, it may not be the same as Mandera or Wajia or wherever. It depends on where people are taking off from. There are areas where already systems have been existing in a better way. There are areas who are starting to peak now. But the issue of wastage and the issue of uh, probably, put it better, corruption. Mm -hmm is again uh, an issue that has to be handled case by case. Today we have seen, and I don't want to go there, but we have seen some of uh, national government officials mm -hmm. arrested. Um, talking so about that's a case. Yes. Uh, I may not, not be talking that, about yes. that probably, but maybe. <laughs> so people have been arrested. We have uh, Governor of Samburu the other day arrested. We had uh, 
um, um, Kiambu governor. Kiambu governor. Kiambu governor. Yeah. So many, um, and some, so many other officers within counties have been summoned to appear before ACC. So all this is case by case. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are making a bit of a mistake because we are contradicting things, in my view. Yes. What we are saying, devolution is working. Everyone says that. Mm -hmm. Is devolution, it working now that Devolution you, is working. Is it working in your perspective? Yes. Devolution is obviously working. The issue here is about capacities for people to do even better than they are doing today. Mm -hmm. But the reality, we somehow, somehow, sometimes we say, this is positive, tomorrow we are talking about the contradiction of it. Mm -hmm. I think there are people who are looking at it negatively. Mm -hmm. And that negativity needs to be changed. Because there is a general perception mm -hmm. uh, that when somebody sees a governor out there in the county, yes. Uh, even in the manner that uh, uh, the picture has been painted, is that if you see a governor, you are seeing somebody corrupt, loaded with money, and he has so many bugs the in the house. The perception is that we devote that's a very negative. Yes. That's, that's a very negative perception. People should look at what are the challenges out there in counties. Um, I think you've talked about the issue about capacity. And, and I basically, know it's county. about capacity. What we need here mm -hmm. is, to, uh, is for us to focus on more on how do we build capacities in counties, in departments, in building the institutions within counties, in uh, effecting uh, development of the, uh, the various sectors mm -hmm. of the economy okay. to be able to perform better. That should be the story. Mm -hmm. The story I, should not be um, their bug governor so-and-so has a bag of money in the house. <laughs> yes, well, so you, ha you have a lot of civic education <laughs> on that but even as you know you talk about that I, I, I know in your county for example you have expressed concerns regarding you know the issue about skills uh, do we have are you working on the education within you know your county to ensure that the right people apply for the jobs and get these jobs because there's always been a question of you know, you know county governments are, and, are employing outsiders yet you do not have the skills within your counties exactly let's go back a bit and look at um, 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 the marginalization of regions mm -hmm. that led to us deciding that no, I think the central system is not working well. Let's go devolution. Now, looking at it from that, you'll be able to tell clearly that certain competencies in other areas where education levels were low mm -hmm. may not be there. Mm -hmm. If you look at Tana, Mandera, Wajia, Lamu, Garissa, Always, in those past years, mm -hmm. now they have left it. But there used to be rankings. Mm -hmm. And you would see down there, you would see us competing among us ourselves from below. Mm -hmm. We don't compete from the top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we compete from below. <laughs> so you'd find one, today is number three, tomorrow from down, number four, number three, number two, and then you go last week. Mm -hmm. The education levels in some areas were a bit challenging. Mm -hmm. Other areas, people have really done it well. So in terms so if of you, in terms of, right now, yeah, in terms of now competencies, you'll find certain competencies are lacking, certain are lower. You cannot compare competencies in Tana or in other place with, other, with some of the areas. Mm -hmm. um, but um, what we've done now, just look at what Kuala probably has done in putting more money to, in, on bursaries, mm -hmm. on uh, uh, scholarship programs. Yes. That is the direction most of the counties have done. Mm -hmm. Is that, that most that, of what you are exactly doing? That's exactly what we've done in Tana also. Yeah. We, have, uh, we have now re tried to even refine our bursary mm -hmm. uh, uh, way of allocating a bursary. Mm -hmm. We have put together uh, the, the bursary for MPs, mm -hmm. uh, the awards and the women rep. Mm -hmm. uh, together and now we have for the first time in Tana now we have the Governor Scholarship uh, Act mm -hmm. um, and now we believe we'll be able to put more money to try and uh, upscale support to the education sector. Mm -hmm. yes. I still want us to look at you know the development within the county and just before we get to you know the, the, the discussion about having what development fund yes. uh, let, let's look at uh, the larger county your county we yes. have the blue economy that the government is really uh, focused on and I know you have the Tana River with you yes. uh, how are you tapping into this as a county uh, well, in terms of boosting first, the first of all first of all we we did our the JKP the Jumia County of Zapwani mm -hmm. blue economy conference uh, ahead of the 
International Blue, Co Blue Economy Conference that was done here in Nairobi last year. Uh -huh. And uh, quite clearly, it was very, very, very clear that uh, Tana, um, among the coastal regions, has quite uh, a very um, serious potential in terms of blue economy. Yes. Um, generally, for the entire coast, we believe we are the giants of blue economy uh -huh. in, in the country. <laughs> uh, because of the potential we have in Kwale, the potential we have in um, um, Mombasa, Kilifi, uh, Taita Taveta and and, uh, um, and Tana River because we are looking at extractives, mm -hmm. we are looking at fishing, maritime, we are looking at agriculture, uh, we are looking at um, 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 uh, industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and looking at all those, um, we had the opportunity for us to be able to uh, talk about what we have in counties. Yes. Now. And I want you to listen well about Tana. Tana is a bit strange because one, we have a 96 beach, um, kilometer beach line, uh -huh. unexploited, different from what the rest of uh, the counties have done. Uh -huh. uh, if you talk about um, um, the area that we are talking about, uh -huh. look at the Sabaki on one side, you look at the Tana River Delta on the other side, uh -huh. all the way towards Lamu, you will get to understand that the ecosystem around there mm -hmm. is so conducive for breeding of very unique uh, uh, maritime species. Mm -hmm. The turtles and the rest of the uh, fishes around there. Mm -hmm. So the how much allocation have you that. done you know, within the county towards boosting this? Um, we are now in partnership with the EU. Mm -hmm. The EU has already funded us to a tune of uh, I think about 110 million uh -huh. for two things. One, for um, a cold storage facility in uh, in Kipini. Yes. And a cold storage facility for milk uh, in Bangale. Yes. Uh, as a county, we had been supporting the BMUs, Kipini, uh, Ozi, and and Chara, uh -huh. and, and, and Chara, uh, and. Um, Although we have not gone fully to uh, do the spatial planning, it's a bit technical, and is uh, we're just on the way to get there. Yeah. But with the EU, <coughs> we have already started on, on the other side, and us as a county, we are supporting each BMU with two boats. Uh -huh. The process is ongoing now uh -huh. for each BMU to uh, get two boats, because one of the challenges they have is that they cannot go deep sea. Okay. Now we believe that towards the end of the year, maybe August, September, they mm -hmm. should be able to have the boats for them to go deep sea. Uh -huh. But so apart from that, yeah. we have within Tana the river. Mm -hmm. We have a 150 kilometer um, 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 stretch yes. of river. Along there, of course, the, 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 the Tana area is, is, is a U-shaped area of the, the river. Yes. So you'd expect me, so many meanders. Yeah. Um, so out of meanders come oxbow lakes. Uh -huh. So we have around 150 oxbow lakes. Uh -huh. And then we have, in fact, we have said this many times, that one of the biggest oxbow lakes in Africa is in Tana. In the Tana. So we have a range of uh -huh. um, 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 water bodies uh -huh. that we can comfortably be able to utilize as uh, for, uh, to, 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 to bring, to magnify the potential there. So now, in your predictions, perhaps, how many people do you think can get employed based on you know, what you're talking about and what you're doing within your county um, to access opportunities from it? I cannot be able to estimate that. There will be no predictions, <laughs> Daniel. All right, that's uh, fine. But I believe quite a number. OK. I have seen it before, even before we went vibrant over it. Mm -hmm. Because I am looking at how many people who are doing um, um, uh, fish, fish, uh, sale of fish at Hola Market yeah. those days. Yes. I'm looking at the Garseni Market. I'm looking at Tarasa. Uh -huh. I'm looking at the entire Delta. I'm looking at Gungoni. Uh -huh. I'm looking at the volumes of fish that used to go to uh, Mal uh, Malindi uh, okay. at the market, the, the ones that go to Mombasa. Um, <laughs> I can assure you is, is, quite, is quite a volume of uh, potential for, uh, that can go into direct and indirect employment. Okay. 
let's still focus on you know development within the county and i want us now to approach it from the ward yes level. we've yes. seen governors uh, and mcs clash over you know what they call the ward development fund which uh, members of the county assembly say they need to have it this mm. is also contained uh, in the punguza mzigo constitutional amendment uh, bill I mean, what do you make of it? Should we begin mm -hmm. development at the ward level or keep it at the constituency and the county level? Uh, now, I think we are a bit getting confused somehow. Even before we talk about wards, let's talk about constituencies. MPs have money for constituencies yes. under the CDF. Yes. They are doing projects. Mm -hmm. Governors have money. Governors have money. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are doing, they are, they are doing basically, in my view, the governors are in charge of now the development programs in counties. Yes. Um, now, there's a new demand. Yes. That MCAs want money now in the wards. Mm -hmm. Even women representatives have women money. Women representatives have also money. Yes. The experience we have now mm -hmm. is so much duplication. Sometimes we clash even with national government institutions. Yes. You, you want to do this piece of road, you have budgeted for it, tomorrow you hear the, MC, the MP also has budget uh, for, the same for the same road. Um, so but you say, no okay, let me, let me pull out of the road I leave for the MP to do. You realize the MP was doing bush clearing, so you have to now to come back to come back and start grading and and and, and put and put graveling. Uh, so somehow there's a bit of that confusion, a conflict uh, on how we should be able, we should implement programs uh, in counties. Mm -hmm. But what is <laughs> uh, what is really uh, making me a bit surprised is the MCS. Uh, are the legislators in, this, in, the, in, in the counties. In the wards. In, in the county. Yeah, in the county assembly. Uh, they're in the county assembly. Here is uh, the executive. We prepare budgets mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Then it goes for, to them, public participation. Yes. It's the same public participation we do to arrive at the budget that they go to verify. Mm -hmm. Now, what I see as a challenge here is not that uh -huh. development is not going to the ward. Yes. Because where does the governor spend the money uh, on? It's still is in it the same county, the, same, the, same, ward, the county, same constituency. Same ward, same constituency. Yeah. But now, the, the gamble here, which I see as a bit unhealthy, is when now MCS again say, we want now money um, exclusively for, for the MCA to be able again to go and do projects for himself. Mm -hmm. I think we need to now start drawing the lines mm -hmm. between what is the role of legislature mm -hmm. and what is actually the role of executive. That is more because about politics to, to want to get re-elected. Yes, I think it's just about government. politics. Yes. About, because what I do in any world mm -hmm. is joint, is is what the government has done. Okay. 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 The government is the executive and the legislature together. So when we go now to that ward and have done a, maybe a school or whatever, it belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. We have done it. Mm -hmm. So you're we generally take, saying we have to take pride and say we right. have done it. Mm -hmm. So you don't support the word development. I don't personally. I, okay. I think I think I think I think that one of the things that I really don't agree with is about this conflict of the institutions of government. Okay. To me, is unhealthy. All right. Governor, our time is up, but I'll just give you one second to look into that camera and perhaps speak to the Kenyan people regarding what really we should expect from the counties and should their allocation be increased to 35% as has been proposed? Yes, I think it is um, Your about time. Your camera is straight on. It is about time that we increase um, allocation of uh, um, division of revenue to counties by that 35%. Mm -hmm. And I know most of the Kenyans want it that way because they know the challenge that is uh, in the ground vis-a-vis -vis the potential. And the intention of devolution was basically about effecting grassroots economy to mm -hmm. be able to contribute 
to counties and to be able to contribute to the national economy. Mm -hmm. And so denying uh, more funding to the counties and offloading more function to the counties mm -hmm. would be a contradiction. It must be commensurate with the It beats the reason for devolution. Completely. All right. Governor, thank you very much for coming yes. to our studios this thank evening you. and of course shedding light what counties are doing and the challenges that you're facing. But we are very optimistic. Everyone uh, is hoping that perhaps uh, the stalemate will be unlocked and we'll begin to see services uh, continuing within the county government. I also hope so. Well, we have been talking to the governor of Tana River County, Dr. Major Retired Dado Godana, putting into perspective uh, county revenue, sources of revenue, the challenges facing counties, and of course, uh, citing that the county governments are working and they still insist that the allocation should remain at the governor's level, not at the uh, constituency or at the ward representative point. My name is Kathleen Achenga. We end the interactive segment now, but of course, business news is up next, so stay tuned.